Hello, and all. Welcome to the Galaxy Man Show. For my very last guest of this week is this incredible artist known by the name of Amber Lawrence, who is a well-known, incredible country singer. So I'm about to add Amber Lawrence into the live now and have a chat with Amber about her incredible music career. So yeah, let's add Amber in and have a chat with Amber. Hey, first up, thank you so much, Amber, for taking the time to join my show. It is such an incredible pleasure having you on the show for today. So people that don't know who you are, Amber, if you can give like a bit of backstory first and then we'll dive right into the questions. Um, well, I'm a country singer and I just won Female Artist of the Year at the Golden Guitars, which was pretty cool last week, two weeks ago. Um, and I've been singing now for full time as my full time job for about 15 years. Um, I started just by writing songs, entering talent quests and, you know, I'm up to my seventh album now and I've released kids albums and yeah, I make a busy life out of it. So we'll dive right into the questions now. So for my very first question, you actually have released yesterday a incredible music video out yesterday called Rise with the sensational Casey Donovan. How does this make you feel getting this music video released and just how does it make you feel as an artist having this out now? Yeah, I love the song. I love the collaboration with Casey and um, it's been received really well. Like what, with the video coming out um, yesterday, uh, lots of people have, more than I expected, have said how much they love the song and how much, um, you know, the message in the song connects to them. And, you know, obviously Casey's such an incredible singer. So, yeah, it's, it, I'm really proud of it. So we'll dive right into the next question. So my very next question, you've created incredible other okay, original songs and for the next original song i'm going to name is bring it back what was it like getting to create bring it back and what's the meaning behind bring it back yeah well that song was written in 2020 in the first lockdown of you know covid that we all went through and um <clears throat> music industry was shut down you know overnight we had to we just were cancelling our gigs unraveling gigs and um when I sat down to write that song and I wrote it over Zoom because I couldn't meet up in person, it was about bringing back the music, you know, not, not so much as an artist but as a, as a member of the audience, you know, someone who stands in a crowd and wants to feel that again. So that's really what that song was about, bring back those moments of um, connection through music. So on to my very next question. So you have also created an original song called Living for the Highlights. What was it like getting to create this one and what's the meaning behind this song? Living for the Highlights is the title track of the album and um, it's that's about how, you know, the glass can be half full, you know, there can be really good things ahead in life. So that's what I was kind of getting at by saying, um, let's go win the lottery, write a song, you could win a Grammy. You know, it's about all the positive things that could happen in your life. Um, and, it, you know, it just came about through meeting new friends um and through my son's childcare or preschool and I was like oh wow you can make new friends at any time this is cool so that's where the that's where the inspiration for the song came from so on to my very next question so you have also created an original song called fill it up what was it like creating this one and what's the meaning behind fill it up fill it up is um a song that you might think is about filling up your cup with whiskey or wine, which is what I say in the song, which it kind of is. But the second part meaning of the song is fill up your heart and your mind and yourself with people that, that inspire you and love you and um, support you. So it's, you know, one of the lines in the song is everybody's here, everybody cheer to a better year. Um, fill it up. So it's kind of like a metaphor. Yes, definitely fill up that cup, but it's about who you're filling that cup up with. So on to my very next question. So you have also created an original song called Make Up for the Lost Wine. What was it like creating this one? And what's the meaning behind this song? Yeah, Making Up for Lost Wine is a fun, tongue-in-cheek play on words. You know, instead of making up for lost time, making up for lost wine. And um, I had to kind of find a way to write that song in terms of, okay, well, why are you making up for lost wine? And... The way we wrote it, the angle we took is that the person who the song's about is is making their own rules now. They're not listening to somebody who used to say, hey, 
you've had too much to drink or you shouldn't be eating that or don't you think it's, you know, you should go to bed, that kind of thing. Um, that person's now out of their lives and they can do what they want, which, which could mean drinking the whole bottle. <laughs> so on to my very next question. So what made you decide as a person and especially as an artist to get into the singing in the first place? Um, I guess it's not really a decision. It's more just, you know, you, you might start singing one day in the school choir and then you audition, you know, for me, I auditioned for the school musical and I, I got a role in the school musical and then, um, and then I got singing lessons and it's just more, it just kind of happens by accident. You know, you, you enjoy it and then maybe you start writing songs, then you might audition for something else or go on a talent quest and it just, it became a snowball effect for me. And then, then I decided to record my first album. And once I did that, that's when, uh, you know, I kind of really decided that this was a career. So on to my very next question. So what does it, performing music mean to you, like, especially as an artist? Mm. Um, I guess, look, I try to make sure people have a good time, you know, that they connect to the music, that they, that they walk out, out of the show feeling either happy or entertained or inspired. Um, that's my, my goal. So that's why I love being a performer. So on to my very next question. So with cover songs, like what's your all time favorite cover song to perform and why? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, hard one. I, I mean, I, I often perform nine to five, um, Dolly Parton. That's a fun song. And like, the cover songs I like to sing are the ones that people like to hear. So, you know, nine to five is a crowd pleaser. I like doing Islands in the Stream. That's a good song. I like Achy Breaky Heart um, by Billy Ray Cyrus. That's quite fun. So it's, a, it's more about the fun factor for the audience. So on to my very next question. So if you could work with any top three music artists that you haven't worked with before, who would you want to work with and why? Top three, did you say? Yeah. Okay. Um, Keith Urban, definitely. Um, who else? There's an artist in America called Cam. She's a singer, um, country singer. I love Cam. And locally, um, maybe the McClymont or Brooke McClymont or all of them. <laughs> so on to my very next question. So if you could go anywhere on tour, any place, any country in the world for your music, where would you want to go to and why? Um, well, it'd be great to make it big in America just because their, their population is so huge. But, you know, I really love doing what I do here in Australia and um, pr pretty committed to just doing it here and, you know, keep on touring. So on to my very next question. So what advice would you give to upcoming artists that want to get into singing? And, yeah, what advice would you give them? Mm, um, do it for the, the love and the enjoyment. Don't do it with this big grand plan of being famous or rich and famous. You know, that that's a byproduct, hopefully. Um, if you enjoy it, then you'll be able to keep going with with um, the ups and the downs of music and the, the energy that's required. So on to my very next question. So if now Amber could talk to younger Amber, looking <laughs> back over your career in the industry, like, what advice would you give to your younger self and why? Hmm. I guess, you know, I would probably say, great job, you've done a good job. I wouldn't be too hard on myself, but maybe maybe just be a little braver, you know. Don't don't feel like you can't push the envelope or, or try something different. Just do it. So I'll answer my very next question. So what are, like, the positive and negative side into the music industry? And how do you get through those, like, negative moments as an artist? Um, the positive stuff is, is all the fun stuff, you know, all the performing, getting people come to your shows, buy your music, buy a t-shirt, come up to you, tell you they love a song or, or a song means something to them. Like these are amazing moments that happen all the time. And, you know, to go with that, of course, there are some downsides, like a lot of traveling, you know, sitting in a car, driving, driving, um, or negative feedback when people don't like you or don't come to a show, you know, that's hard. How do you get through it? I mean, the travel, you just have to do that. <laughs> Put some good podcasts on um, or good music. Negative feedback, it, it's one one thing is, you know, don't listen to it. Don't look for it. Um, 
and then I guess the other thing is 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 knowing who you are, why you're doing things, and having when you do get negative feedback, being able to say, okay, now I've heard it, fine, brush it away, rather than take it on board, and, and that's all you think about. So, yeah, it's trying to remember the positives over the negatives. So on to my very next question and last question. So, like, what's next for you for the rest of 2023 onwards? Like, anything that you'd like to announce? Oh, no. Well, we just had the new single out yesterday. Um, next week I'll be uh, inviting people to um, pitch for me to come to their town to perform. And we'll be busy towards the end of the year with lots more touring. We've got a lot of festivals and lots of fun things. We've got a trip to Fiji for the music festival there. We've got the cruise um, and, yeah, some great festivals coming up and more touring. So can't wait. Well, I just want to say thank you so much, Amber, for taking the time to join my show. It has been such an incredible pleasure having you on the show for today. Uh, to people that don't know Amber, definitely go support Amber and more inspiring artists like Amber in this world. So definitely go support Amber. Uh, I just want to say, by the way, my cousin, uh, her name's Desiree. She adores you so much. And when, oh, you, really? were Tamworth, yeah, when you were in Tamworth, um, she was like, oh, my God, Casey. Like, oh, my God. Amber was like actually at our hotel. And oh, she wanted, really? Yeah, she wants to walk up <laughs> to you. Uh, and oh, she was like, she, she, was, she was too shy, but like, yeah, she, I just wanted to let you know that my oh, cousin adores so nice. you. Oh, Do you have, say like, hi. Yeah, I definitely will. Do you have like any last final thoughts you'd like to share to people on the show? Oh, no, no. Just sorry that, you know, I'm in my casual beach wear. <laughs> Sometimes to make it, we can't fake it